All right. Please, families, make sure that you have your cameras off and your microphones muted as well. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. This is our parent impact meeting for November 1st, and it has been an exciting start to the school year. So busy, so fun, so many exciting things to share with you and discuss. We do have the chat room open, so you can post questions to the chat, and we do have um, admin that will be answering those, and we'll also touch base at the end to answer any questions that were posted in the chat as well. All right, so here's our agenda for today. We're going to go over some school performance data. Um, we have updates from all of the grade levels, um, activities, winter sports, car loop, and then we will answer any questions as well. All right, so we did get our um, SBAC data from last year. We get that over the summer um, generally, so um, we're able to, um, with a uh, our company raising the bar with Jessica Barr. She's able to do a lot of data analysis for us. And so it's exciting to see how we completed the year and how our students performed and see our areas that we want to work on this year and see what we did well in, in um, last year as well. Um, so for elementary, this is our elementary school performance data. Um, extremely strong. ELA 77.7%, math 69.5% proficient. And when you look at star ratings, that is 20 out of 20 on the pooled proficiency ratings. Um, the state is not issuing star ratings, issuing stars this year. However, they are still issuing the numbers, so we can still correlate those, um, but they are not officially you know, releasing star numbers. But like I said, we still can look at them and know where we would fall in the star ratings. And when you look at our data for third, fourth, and fifth, really exciting to see our third performing so strong because those are the ones that, you know, started, a lot of those started kindergarten with us. Um, so we're building that foundation as well. All three grade levels, third, fourth, and fifth, really, really strong in um, math achievement. And this is, so level three and four for I, for SBAC is, is proficient. Um, and so Really exciting to see that most of our students fell in level four. Um, that's that's the highly proficient level. And so that's exciting to see that we're not only doing well, but exceeding at the highest level possible. And this is elementary ELA. Again, extremely strong. And look how good our fifth graders did, 82.3%. They are ready for middle school. That's exciting to see. So very strong, five out of five stars on that. Uh, Proficiency level as well. Excellent job. And this is our surrounding school comparison. So you can see how, um, and you see our bar graph, uh, how we compared to the state of Nevada, to Clark County CCSD schools, to charter schools, to a couple of our nearby um, schools as well. So, so really exciting to see us just excelling and outperforming um, our neighboring schools and districts. So fantastic job. I'm so proud of our elementary school um, students and, and teachers for how, how well they performed. And five stars. Yes. So like I said, they're not giving stars. They're giving the, the rating and the number, which is 86 out of 90, but that does correlate to five stars for our elementary school. Fantastic job. We are so proud of you. Looking at middle school, middle school performed fantastically, ELA 68.2, math 42.7. Math is definitely an area of focus, and I was really proud of our middle school teachers and students last year when we met mid-year. We really made math a big focus, and they did a lot of differentiation and did a lot of focus to really hone in on those math skills. Um, so we received 24 out of 25 points on the star rating there. And excellent job. This is ELA achievement, very strong, six six coming at, uh, in really high and all three grade levels, really fantastic, sixth, seventh and eighth and ELA. And this is our surrounding school comparison. So you can see that we're definitely performing fantastically in middle school compared to the district, the state and our surrounding campuses as well. And congratulations, middle school, also a five-star campus. Fantastic job. Excellent, excellent job. High school, when we get to high school, so we don't have a star, technically a star rating this year. We don't have a graduating class until this year, but we still can like project. We can take a look at um, how we're looking at the 
indicators that we have currently, which would not be graduating class, but we, but we can look at CERT and some of those other things to look at how our high school is performing. Um, and if you look at, this is eighth grade ACT CERT performance. Um, the pink is above benchmark. So you see that our students are really performing really highly on CERT and that's such a good indicator. It gets them ready for ACT, it gets them ready for those testing. Um, so you can see that, that such a high percentage performing above benchmark on CERT. Same for ninth grade, ninth grade performing fantastically, English, ELA, excellent, excellent scores there. Um, but across the board, uh, a large number performing above benchmark. And this is 10th grade. Excellent job there. Also really strong in ELA, which is a huge, huge factor. All right. In our high school, like I said, we don't have a graduating class, so we can't technically do stars, but the indicators that we do have, our high school is on track to be a five-star high school for last year. So uh, awesome job. Congratulations. We're so excited. And we'll have a lot of high school updates to share with you and um uh, and, and stuff. So Miss Russell will share those later. So, um, but our high school is just doing amazing. It's so exciting to, to have our first graduating class this year and to see the, the dual enrollment up and uh, launched and doing well and just them performing at such a high level. So we're so excited. Um, all right. And then also statewide, um, all three of our campuses ranked within the top 20 in the state. So elementary ranked number eight in the state, middle school ranked number 20 in the state, and high school ranked 18th in the state. So incredible. And when you're talking about like three to 400 schools um, per grade level, so that's that's incredible to have those kind of numbers. So, so proud of what we're doing here. Thank you to our families and to our staff and to our students for all of your hard work. Um, it's, it's, it's paying off. So I can't thank you enough. It's incredible. Thank you so much. All right, K2 updates, Ms. Sarnecki. Uh, good morning. Uh, so we have celebrations in K2 to start the year. Our students have been hard at work in quarter one, um, pulled a little bit of our iReady stats. Uh, so far, you can see that our students have passed almost, <clears throat> excuse me, 8,000 iReady reading lessons. Um, and a little over 5,300 iReady math lessons. Um, our kindergarten and high school um, seniors have combined for a legacy um, events that are happening monthly throughout the year. And I know Ms. Russell will talk and share a little bit about those later. Um, and they have been a huge success as we have partnered our smallest and our um, seniors together um, to create a bond to, um, together for this school year. Uh, we have some field trips that have already happened um, and some that are planned in K2. Our kindergarten classes visited the Gilcrease Orchard where they got to pick their own pumpkins. They went on the hayride. Um, they enjoyed fresh apple cider. It was a great time. Um, currently, they are also looking to plan a holiday ride on the Boulder City train. And we're hoping to possibly do this with our uh, high school senior buddies as well. So that will be a fun trip. First grade is visiting the Las Vegas farm this Friday. And second grade has two trips planned so far. They are going to the CSN Observatory in November and they will be visiting um, the Smith Center in January to watch a performance. So exciting things happening and uh, we look forward to, for all that's to come. Good morning, everybody. Edward Savarese, 3-5 uh, assistant principal. Some interesting information coming your way from third through fifth. Our students have also been challenging themselves in quarter one, and we've been having a very impressive year with over 9,709 past iReady reading lessons this year so far, and 9,132 past um, math lessons. This is not attempted. This is not tried. These are past lessons. So this is just showing the dedication that your students are, are showing each and every day. Um, I know that it is hard work. And I know that many of us, including myself, have our little ones that are saying, okay, this is tough, but we are truly getting them ready for college and career. And we're starting all the way down in elementary. So uh, next time you talk to your kiddos, give them a little bit of praise because they've certainly earned it. Um, I also want to give third grade a shout out because third grade at the moment is also leading us with over 4,700 in math 
and 5,100 in ELA. So again, that hard work and dedication is truly paying off. Work hard, play hard. Some field trips that have come along is third grade is coordinating um, a trip to the planetarium and the courthouse and to SeaWorld later in the year. So keep your ears and eyes open for that. Fourth grade has also attended the El Dorado Mine and developed an appreciation for Nevada history and its world role within gold and silver production. Uh, it was interesting. I got to go on one of those trips and it was really quite impressive. I had not, I had no clue that Nevada was one of, if not the biggest producer worldwide. Uh, really caught me off guard. Um, and then fifth grade is planning a trip to Springs Preserve shortly. Um, I think they're aiming for the middle to end of November. Um, more information will follow shortly. They're also looking into doing an overnight camping trip this year to Zion, which is a good old fashioned um, fifth grade tradition within Pinecrest. If we're not able to secure Zion, they are also looking at possibly doing one up in northern Las Vegas to then focus on stargazing and um, navigation with stars. So that's going to be exciting. More information will follow uh, as that becomes available. Student Council has also been formed for the first time in elementary. Some really exciting news there. So um, voting took place over the last few weeks. And then last week, we had the pleasure of getting to introduce all of our student, our student council body um, nominations and recipients. All right, good morning, everyone. We are so excited to talk about how many I ready reading and uh, math lessons our students are completing in middle school. As our students start to creep up in those upper grades, they're wondering what the importance is with I ready. Uh, but truly, you can see how many students are working uh, towards their goals and their individual pathways. And we're so excited to see how many of them are really challenging themselves and really pushing themselves that first quarter. So we're excited to see what those numbers are for quarter two. Uh, let's see if they can challenge themselves and push themselves a little bit further past those numbers. Uh, in this past quarter, we were able to have Jeff Bealey come and speak to our middle schoolers on bullying and really social skills for our students. Uh, some of these resources were sent out in the middle school newsletter, so tune in there if you're looking for some resources to work with your kiddos. Our week of respect was extremely successful. Our students were so excited to be caught being kind uh, and they really, really wanted to have another moment where they could be caught being kind. So that's something that we're really trying to increase this semester. Uh, our mindfulness room is finally up and running. Uh, we have mindfulness mornings from 7.10 to 7.25 with our safe school professional, Ms. Salmon. And bullying and prevention awareness lessons are continuing inside of middle school classrooms from our counselor, Ms. Kreider. If you haven't met Ms. Salmon or Ms. Kreider, feel free to reach out. They are fantastic here at Sloan Canyon, and they provide tons of resources for not only your students, but your families as well. And some upcoming field trips that we're really excited about. Sixth grade will be going to Pali from February 27th to March 1st. Reach out to Ms. Truex and Mr. Height for more details. More information will follow on that one as well. Seventh grade is planning a trip to Santa Cruz Island and an in-town trip depending on availability. And then eighth grade is planning a trip to Universal for the spring. And then Finance Park will actually be coming to us at Sloan Canyon. And more information will follow. Hey everyone, uh, Justin Turner here. We're gonna go over uh, homecoming because uh, that went very well. We had an amazing 2022 homecoming. Uh, we had nearly 80% of our student body show up to our events, um, which is pretty pretty great because most schools, like optimally they look at like 50% participation. Um, and so the fact that we're consistently getting most of our student body to come out to our events and participate uh, is a is just a great thing. Um, as you can see here, like our seniors did uh, claim victory over everything this year, which is great for them because uh, it's been up and down. And obviously, like most of the kids, they've had some interruptions in their uh, in their high school experiences. So it was a kind of a great way to for them to have their last first or last uh, homecoming of, of the year. Um, yeah, everything went really well. The kids were well behaved. Uh, they looked great with their you know semi formal attire. 
Um, it was, you know, very respectful. Everything went really well. Um, so we're excited and, you know, it's just a good tradition to, to have established and can't wait for, for next year's. Hi everyone, Miss Russell here. Oh, I can't click to the next slide. <laughs> um, so one of the other things that Ms. Arnecki already talked about a little bit was our seniors participated in our October legacy event. They got to attend the costume parade and oh my gosh, they were so cute, both the littles and the bigs, um, but the big kids were cheering them on and clapping for them and dancing with them and it was just so sweet. And then later on the seniors went over and played bingo with them with candy corn. There was lots of candy corn being snuck off the bingo sheets, but it was so fun to see them. They were all looking for their little friends and we can't wait to continue. We'll do one monthly and it'll end in our legacy walk, which is where our kindergrads and our seniors will walk together in their cap and gowns and lots of tears will be shed by this admin team for sure because we are so excited for this. Um, we'd also like to highlight that um, we have take October 25th, um, class of 2024, so our juniors took some of them took the PSAT National Merit Scholarship uh, qualifying test. Basically, it's a PSAT that enters you into a scholarship program. And we also are excited to announce that we have three seniors who were actually nominated as National Merit Scholarship semifinalist, which is amazing when you're looking at schools next to us like Coronado who have three and out of our class of 84 seniors to have three is a huge celebration and these are all just great students so deserving of the recognition and I really think that they can move on to the next steps. This is going to open up a lot of doors for them so we're very proud and we're going to continue to celebrate them. Some other things we did, our sophomores um, and some volunteer juniors and seniors completed the ASVAB test. The ASVAB test is provided to us for free by the Armed Services, and they actually work with us to help the students um, take an aptitude test, and then they come back and interpret the results combined with a survey about their um, career interests. And um, this really helps kids their sophomore year decide what they're interested in and what they want to go with. Um, it is great, too, for those who do have interest in joining the armed services or going into the Air Force Academy or something like that, um, because that can kind of give them a signal for where they are in terms of acceptance. But I mean, we have had kids store in the 99th percentile, and we are just so impressed. Um, the ACT, I just want to give you guys a save the date for that because that is a graduation requirement. And so again, our juniors, March 8th, 2023, please make sure you're here that day because that box needs to be checked in order to graduate. Um, the seniors and juniors also had caps and gowns and class ring presentations. Those are open for purchase. I did send that link out to everyone just in case, you know, how high schoolers are. They don't always bring you their papers. Um, they are in the high school newsletter. Um, so the link is there. If for some reason you can't get it, you can email me at stephanie.russell at pinecrestnv.org. And, you know, we're in full swing with these seniors. And the other thing we did is a FAFSA event. Um, thank you to Ms. Small and Mr. Lindemuth, who um, worked with CSN to have a FAFSA night. This is where families and students could work with CSN representatives to apply for their financial aid. And that was really awesome that they were able to do that. And Mr. Andy, you want to take this slide and I'll take the next. Yes, so we have some secondary focuses this quarter that we really wanted to drive home with our families. So as we enter second quarter of this school year, which was just started about two weeks ago on the 14th, uh, we really want everyone to know that we're focusing heavily on fluency in mathematics and then really that strong writing and those vocabulary skills. We've noticed that that's a huge deficit in middle and in high school and our students, and that's going to be our huge focus this next quarter with our teachers. And they're working very diligently on grammar, fluency, vocabulary, uh, the James Schaefer writing process, and really making sure our students are filling those foundational gaps. We would also like to remind parents that missing assignments are the largest negative impact on the student's grade. Please, please, please discuss the importance of turning work in on time. That way your student has the greatest possibility of receiving that highest score that they can earn. If your student is struggling with classwork, we encourage you to sign up for Sloan Scholars. This program is run by teachers in a homework help and tutoring program that allows students to sign up for $20 a week to attend homework help and tutoring sessions daily. Again, a time period is from 2.45 to 4.15. You can go ahead and sign up on sloancanyonspirit.com and registration is weekly for that. And that is a really great resource for students that are struggling. 
All right, Ms. Russell. All right. And so in secondary, we really want to communicate some of these focuses to our families. And, you know, one of the things is our social emotional areas of focus. Um, kids coming back from virtual school really need some assistance with that. And some of the things that, well, overall, our students are genuinely wonderful. We have subs and teachers who just can't stop telling us how amazing the culture is and how different our students are from other schools. And that is really, really a, a compliment. And we really believe in that culture and community. Um, but one of the feedbacks that we got from our uh, counselors and safe schools professionals is um, when students exit friendships or relationships um, and kind of how to do that maturely without having drama. So that's going to be a focus for ours uh, for this quarter and really working with them on those skills. It's OK to end a friendship. It's OK to end a, a dating relationship. But if you're going to do that, how do you do that kindly and without drama? And so that's one of those things. If you guys could also talk to your students about it, that would be great. Um, and then our behavior areas of focus. Um, one of the biggest things is we have a lot of students coming tardy to class. We have a pretty small building and a pretty long passing period at five minutes. So making sure that while they um, have that time to go stop by their lockers, say hi to their friends that they're getting to class on time um, and sharing uh, with them that importance because it does miss class time and it does affect their grade when they are missing those assignments. And then, well, I know this isn't the student's favorite thing, their lanyards is another thing we just asked that you could help us remind them to bring every day. These have really helped with school security and our walker passes, elevator passes, and it really has smoothed things along in our lunchroom. They have their um, lunch passes on there. So if they forget their lunch, even they can scan for a free lunch. So we just want to make sure that they have those because that just helps our school run smoothly and maintain safety. All right, so the, uh, that's back to me for activities. Um, so we are in the midst of our of Sloan's Big Give. We did start this last year. Uh, we had a lot of clubs and organizations who wanted to give back to the community, uh, do some sort of fundraising or collections, um, and it just got to be a lot. And so we thought, you know what, let's go ahead and divide and conquer here and uh, give each grade level a focus area so that we can make this a little bit more seamless. So that's where the big give came from. And so this did officially start on the 24th. However, we usually don't start receiving things um, probably for the next week or so. Um, and this does go towards the, uh, goes until uh, November 18th. Um, and you can see on the flyer here, which will be continued to like be advertised out and sent out uh, to our students, um, that each grade level does have a certain focus. Um, there will be collection boxes sent out um, so that we can, you know, collect all those things and then get them to where they need to, to get going. Um, then you can see here next we have our, uh, it says together we are tougher than cancer. And so one of our um, one of our awesome school employees, uh, Heather Hedrick, uh, Hedrick, excuse me, um, you know, is, is battling um, is battling cancer, and so we want to do what we can to support her. Um, and so this Wednesday, there is going to be um, a parent staff or parent versus student flag football game um, on our field. Uh, it is de donation based entry, and all those proceeds will go to her. So any support that we can get from the community is fantastic. So we'd love to love to have you guys out there for that. Um, then we have our first uh, middle school dance coming up on November 4th. That is this coming Friday. Um, it is 5.30 to 8. Uh, it is in our middle school or our secondary MP room. Um, tickets are sold on our school spirit store. Um, that's where all of our event tickets will be sold from here on out. It's just much easier for us to, to keep track of all of that. We have like a roster of the kids um, and that sort of thing. Uh, and so we're really excited about it. Uh, it's our first one. So make sure they get their tickets soon. Um, and there is a QR code on the flyer that was also sent out. Um, then we have our holiday uh, ornament paint party, which is also being put on by our PTO. Um, that is Friday, November 18th. So that's coming up in a couple weeks. Uh, it's six to eight. Um, and it's just a fun way to get out there and do something holiday, you know, holiday uh, friendly. And um, it's the fourth year we've done this and the ornaments always turn out super cute. Um, it's just a fun time to, to come and be a part of. Um, the ornaments are $12.50 each. Um, and it, we do take the Visa or MasterCard um, or cash. Um, and it does want us to note that there is a $2 credit card convenience fee. So just be aware of that. Um, then we have our elementary winter dance, which is our first um, elementary dance of the year as well. Um, we One of our big goals this year was to make sure that our elementary students also get their fair share of events. Um, we focus a lot on the secondary just because it does take a long time to kind of build up that culture. Um, 
But now we're really happy to be able to start focusing on our elementary. And with this particular dance hour, um, as Mr. Savary said earlier, our newly formed or in the process of forming elementary student council will really be heading this up um, with some help from our middle and high school student councils as well. Um, and we will have more details on that to come in terms of like what that what time frame that looks like and what's also included with that dance. So just giving you guys a heads up about that. Um, and then lastly, we have our Winter Wishes drive through light display. Um, we did this last year for the first time um, and it turned out really well. It was super fun. Um, it was really cool to see the cars drive by and we had, you know, choir students singing carols and just different light displays. That was just like a fun thing that we wanted to give back to the community. Um, this also pairs up with our Winter Wishes week for our entire campus. We are gonna have a, a, a spirit week, um, assemblies, uh, and we do like a fun thing with winter wishes, um, but that's more student based, obviously, and the winter wishes drive through light show is more for the community. Um, that is Friday, December 9th from 530 to 730. Um, it is a light show through our car loop um, and there will be hot cocoa and holiday go goodies for sale, but admission to the light show is free. So uh, we really hope to see you guys out there for that. Um, and as we get closer, probably within the next week or so, we'll probably put out a little bit more information. Um, but yeah, so that's that's most of the happenings for the rest of this school year. Um, and then obviously next year we'll have plenty more. All right, so we're going to talk about KE through eight winter sports. Um, the only sports that are currently going to be offered during the winter is basketball and bowling. Um, bowling is currently going on for high school, um, and the same coach will be our middle school coach and our elementary coach. Um, however, it is based on a dependent, it is depending on the interest level for bowling if we will have it for those age levels, but we will have basketball for all K through eight um, students. Um, in the next week, hopefully by Friday is our goal is to have all of our tryout dates um, set up all of our practice dates um, set up and know in advance all that information for you so that we can put it in one big email um, for all of our K through eight families So be on the lookout for that email. Um, it'll have all that important information in it for you. Um, the basketball season for us does run from December 1st to March 4th. That does not include tryout dates. Tryout dates will be before those dates, but the season and practices will start um, December 1st. Practices um, are still to be determined, so we're hoping to have that in the informational email. Um, if not, we will have that information by tryouts. Um, games for um, K through eight are primarily on Saturdays. Um, so if Saturdays don't work for you, and you're going to be missing all of the games. Sports probably are not the best route for you um, because we do have a lot of kids that have a lot of activities they do on weekends. Um, and those games start January 7th, so after we return from winter break. Um, the bowling season is the same dates. It's from December 1st to March 4th. Their games are primarily held on Mondays. So if you're interested in bowling, please know that your availability for games would need to be on Mondays. Um, we also have an amazing website that we have created for K through eight sports, um, where all this information will also be uploaded in addition to the email that will be being sent. And the link for that is on the bottom. Um, so when these slides get sent out to families, you're more than welcome to click on that. Hi, my name is Melanie Moreno. Uh, I'm going to talk about high school winter sports. We have three different options this year. We have boys and girls basketball. This will be our first year having girls basketball. We'll have girls flag football and we will also have bowling, which will also be our first year doing bowling. Um, in our murals right now for our going on for girls flag football and boys and girls basketball, um, all that information should be able to be found in the Pirate Post. Um, our coaches for bowling is um, Coach Shram. He's a teacher here. We have boys basketball, um, same coaches as last year, Bostic and Burke. We have girls basketball this year will be Coach Johnson and Coach Soifua. And then girls flag football is Coach Soifua. And they are not the same people. One is dad and one is his daughter. Um, our Both our ADs here is Coach Soifua and myself. If you ever have any questions, our emails are right here. You can go ahead and give us um, an email and we will try to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Um, our fees for high school, best, um, any of the sports are 275. Tryouts will be starting November 12th. We don't have exact days or times yet, but we will be getting those out um, soon. We do have an all winter meeting tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. in our gym. 
It's for parents and athletes. So if you have any students that are thinking about coming out for one of these sports or definitely coming out for one of these sports, um, we ask that you do attend this meeting and you'll get to meet all the coaches. Um, me, myself and coach Soifua, the other AD will be going over what is expected of our athletes here at Sloan Canyon and just kind of going over when practices will be, when games will be um, and going over all the information and then we'll break up into individual sports and you'll get to talk more with the coaches and they'll be able to go over more information with you as well. All right. Thank you so much. So many exciting things happening. It's really fantastic. So everyone's favorite topic, car loop. So I'll go over a few updates. Um, elementary is running really smoothly. Um, so thank you so much. We don't have walkers there. Parents are coming through. That's really running running well. Um, really, it's secondary car loop that I want to touch on and provide some reminders about. Um, mostly um, just controlling our area around our campus. I, I don't have a lot of control of what happens off campus. That's an HPD issue. If you see things going on, please contact them. I have as well. I've you know asked for support there and, and, and they're providing as much as they can. Um, but I just want to make sure that our area around our campus is really what I can hone in and focus on. Um, so one, no parking. So our school zone, all, all of the area around our campus is a school zone. So no parking in our bike lanes, you know, around campus, um, on volunteer, there's a lot of things I'm asking from the city, you know, to give us some more signage and things. And so um, having parents drop off on volunteer really does us a disservice because, you know, they're saying like, you know, we can't be impeding traffic on volunteer. It's a very high speed roadway um, and it's not safe. So no drop offs, no pickup or drop off, drop offs on volunteer. There is a road further down. You can pull in there. I don't have any control over that. If you know families pull in uh, to that road further down, that is fine. Um, keeping our crossing air guard areas clear. So we now, we are paying for our crossing guards. We were not provided those. That is something that us as a school is paying for. Um, so I've really been communicating to students that we need to abide by those crossing guard rules. So, you know, not crossing in the middle of the street. So crossing on Chaparral and running across there. I'm like, no, you need to go down to the crossing guard areas. Also, I need our families to keep those areas clear. So if you are on, um, that would be Chaparral, um, that turn lane, park back a few, you know, if, if you're dropping off, like I said, I really can't control that, but I need our crossing guard areas clear. So pull back, you know, keep a few, car lanes open for that same that whole corner right there the corner of volunteer or, or the corner of dale dale and chaparral that whole area needs to be kept clear so that our crossing guards can see um cars aren't pulling around to make a turn and then um not being able to see when students are crossing so that area needs to be kept clear um there are no u-turns permitted in the school zone that is state law I mean, this entire area around our campus is a school zone. You cannot U-turn in there. Um, students may not cross in the middle of the street. That is one of the things that I'm definitely taking walker passes for, because like I said, we we are paying for crossing guards. So um, if they're not, if students are not following the safe routes of travel, then those are circumstances where I would have to remove um, walker passes. And then please respect our adjacent businesses. I know this one right across from us on Chaparral, um, their employees park in the, the front of that lot. Um, she really is does not care about what, you know, if you're parking further back in the lot, but please be respectful of them and their employees and their parking spaces. Um, they've also been very respectful to us and saying that, that after school events and night things, we can use their parking lot. So we want to have good relationships with our with our community partners um, in the surrounding area. So um, please, you know, and so thank you so much. I mean, it's definitely getting smoother by the day and uh, we're doing our best to keep our students safe and keep our travel clear and safe. Um, so thank you so much for your support there with our car loop. So please, please, please be mindful of um, our surrounding area and dropping off safely and picking up safely and um, speed zones, you know, being um, making sure you're in the school speed limit zone and no U-turns as well. So thank you so much. All right. Questions. Do we have anything in the chat or other questions to address?
my chat is clear as of the moment right now if there's any questions feel free to write them in the chat to myself or mr severis or miss arnecki or miss russell or mr Littman. we are here to answer those questions at this point in time i also want to open it up that if you come up with any questions in the near future please feel free to reach out to us via email or or phone call would be happy to answer any questions yes absolutely we're all here so please send us an email don't feel like the impact meeting is your only source of contact so you can email any one of our administrators at any time and we're always here for you so thank you so much our pirate family is amazing and we're doing great things on this campus so thank you thank you all right see you next time have a great day